All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to True Footy. Jersey, today we're going to be talking about Richmond and their shock mm. loss to the Gold Coast Suns. Obviously, uh, people have been talking up Richmond and the, the, the hot question on people's lips is, are Richmond done? Is this the end of the dynasty or is this just a blip in the road? But we're filming this straight after a horrifying loss to the Gold Coast Suns in what is definitely not a home game as such because they don't play at Marvel, yeah. but this was originally an away game and it's certainly more of a home game for them than it was for the Gold Coast Suns. Mm -hmm. Everyone, for myself included... We've been talking about the Tigers and, and being wary of them, and I think I had them as my sixth best team in my power rankings. The sixth team most likely to win the flag, uh, but that was until Thursday night when Gold Coast knocked them off. The Suns headed down to Marvel, as you said, Jesse, and they pretty much dominated Richmond, which is not very familiar to see Gold Coast dominating any team, let alone the reigning premiers, Jesse. That just shows how stinky they are at the moment. So Gold Coast had 40 more possessions, 22 more inside 50s, and 10 more scoring shots as well. And they only won by 10 points. So yeah. to have 10 more scoring shots, they won by 10 behind. Like They should have won by They points. could have got belted. Ben Ainsworth, he's a terrible set shot, but he had about five set shots. And yeah, really could have put them to the sword, but but he didn't. And they, they got away scot-free. Well, not scot-free, because they got an L, but they could have got absolutely pumped and been absolutely embarrassed if it wasn't already embarrassing enough. You know what occurred to me as well? Only 9,000 people showed up to the game. Mm, I think it's that 25% cap. Yeah, but the 25% capacity is still, you know, like, what, is that 15 to 14,000? Yeah. So, you know, in Melbourne, Richmond have 103,000 members. Yeah. What's the excuse for them not showing up to this game and showing some support? It might have yeah. made a difference. Yeah. Well, who was it that they played against at Marvel and no one showed up? Richmond had a home game at Marvel and Damien Hardwick complained. It GWS, yeah. Might have been GWS. Yeah, it was the one they won narrowly. And yeah, they don't like Marvel for whatever reason. But who would want to go see them at the moment, Jesse? They're terrible. If the Eagles had an away game scheduled at bloody Joondalup, I'd mm. probably go. Yeah, to be for honest. sure. So, but yeah, anyway, that's not the point of the video. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been Basha Hawley's last game as well. He got another what? Another one of those syndesmosis injuries. Syndesmosis. I'm an ex say scientist. <laughs> <laughs> He's sort of been rumored to be retiring for the last like 12 months. So to go down with a, an injury like that looks like that could be his last game. So another blow to Richmond. The thing with them as well is that. They're such a strong team in the second half of the season. Every mm. year they've won the flag. They've started the year poorly and then finished it really strongly. Injuries are part of that. I think in 2018 they had a really good run. Every year since 2019, I think Richmond have actually been cruel by injuries. Mm -hmm. But I've got some stats here for you. This is their form since 2017 when they first won their flag. Pre-buy, they're 39 one draw and 22. So that's a winning percentage of 63%. Pretty average. 110%. Yeah, you'd expect them to be, you know, in the eight around that range. But in the second half of the year, they generally lose only one or two games max. Uh, so post buy, they're 39 and nine. And that's taking into account their two recent losses. 81% winning percentage and the percentage is around 140%. So that's a team like riding attention top two, potentially top four as well. Part of that is explained by injuries, like I said. I think this year they've had guys like Cochin, Bolton, Prestia, Edwards, Lambert, Vlostrin, and now Bolton and Broad missing footy. Mm -hmm. But we've seen that in the past they've overcome it. And this year it's probably getting a little bit hard for them to overcome it. And the other part of that is also strength and conditioning. I've heard Damien Hardwick saying, you know, their strength and conditioning focuses on priving themselves in the second half of the year and pushing for finals. But at the moment, you have to say it's looking a little bit different this year. They've already lost eight games this season, Jesse, and they haven't done that since 2016 when they didn't win a flag. So, I mean, eight losses, no flag in 2016. I think it's going to be the same story this year, Jesse. I don't see Richmond contending this year. I think they should put a line through this season. <sighs> Stinky. Yeah, I think after the bye, they're already 0-2 and, and they've lost three in the bounce. So, like, you could say, obviously, they're a strong second half of the year team, but that's maybe not sustainable. We're kind of waiting for a time mm. where they don't quite get up, and they could still make the eight and challenge, but uh, it's looking a little bit tougher at the moment. Yeah, it's going to be the, the steepest mountain they've had to climb yet for a flag, I believe. But we were saying that last year when they had the hub in Queensland for the entire year amongst all the injuries. Basha mm. Hawley not playing. Shane Edwards didn't play either for personal reasons, from memory. I think mm. they decided not to go to the hub and still won the flag. So we know that they're capable, but this is the worst team I've seen Richmond put out uh, since, yeah, 2016, where they were, like, bottom six or whatever they were. They only had two players over 20 disposals against Gold Coast the other night. That's Dusty sick. and Basher. Basher's out now, and Dusty, I mean, there's only so much weight he can carry. He's a, he's a strong man, but mm. it gets it gets a bit too much sometimes. But we've said it before, Richmond are a very systems-based side. They're stars. They don't have too many of them. I mean, Jack Rewalt, Tom Lynch, you could argue, Dusty... Grimes, um, I'll probably add to that Yeah, Grimes, yeah. Basher, who's out now. Yeah. Um, Cochin's just a solid player. I wouldn't say mm. he's a star. So, star players aren't really carrying or aligning at the moment. Mm. And th those role players who are in the side, now that the system's sort of 
begin like cracks have begun to appear in the system it's sort of all crumbling mm. that's that's how it seems so, from from the outset looking in so in this first part of the season we saw them cop some heavy losses and you think oh okay this is Richmond though they, yeah. they're priming themselves later so when you look at it they, they had a 45 point loss to Sydney the 6 goal loss to the Demons who were the best team in the comp as it mm-hmm. stands the 11 goal loss to Geelong was probably the first time we were like hmm didn't expect yeah. that that's a bit too much in a big big game we're facing the very real prospect that they're not going to come back and, yeah. and make up for those losses considering they've just lost to Gold Coast and St Kilda. Yeah, their last three. Losing to West Coast, that was a great game to be fair. But mm. yeah, it just looked like they were running out of fuel in that game and then they didn't get over the line. They show up the next week to St Kilda and kick their lowest score in like 60 years or something. Mm. And then losing to Gold Coast at home. Now you look at that early season form where they got pumped by Sydney at home. They got pumped by Geelong and you're like, alright, this is just this might just be the story of this season. Mm. I don't think it's going to follow a similar pattern to it. What it has in the past. I do have this, a little bit of a theory um, as, as an Eagles fan who's biased, but I do wonder if losing that game to West Coast deflated them enough for them to put out two performances like that, because this season was kind of on the line in the sense that, you know, it was go time, for, yeah. and they were winning that game, they were controlling it, and then I don't. I, it's harsh to say that they bottled it. I think, uh, as a biased Eagles fan, I think the Eagles turned it on mm. and played to a level I haven't seen the Eagles play for, for a number of years. They really, you know, cooked them. And then I can see why they'd be deflating, thinking, "Oh shit, maybe, maybe it's not going to happen yeah. this year. The motivation is not there." And you have to think some of the performances have to be mental. If you're losing a Gold Coast who are under a massive amount of pressure yeah. and kicking two goals against St Kilda, another team that's under a lot of pressure, um, yeah, it El Stanko up in this yeah. bitch. They're not playing with any confidence. Like the the fluidity of their ball moving up the ground it's just not there like Richmond have always just moved the ball up the ground really well just getting it into space for the for the smalls to run onto but even that they haven't been able to do just yeah out of the back half just sloppy ball use sloppy hands not really making any chains up the ground, which they've been renowned for over the years. More sloppy ball use than Bushrod on a Saturday night. <laughs> Terrible. So as I was preparing to, to make this reaction video, I did a little bit of digging into, you know, what what was the team that uh, Richmond put out against Gold Coast and what what is their soft underbelly? And I think it's their midfield, to be honest. Now, mm-hmm. we, we talked about, you know, their system team. Midfield, that part of the ground for them, it's not a comparative strength. They're world-class backs and their, you know, great forward line uh, mm-hmm. with Rewalt and Lynch in particular. That's always set them apart. And their midfield has always... It's always been a little bit workmanlike. And I, I understand at the moment they're out without um, Nan Curvis and they got butchered in the ruck against St Kilda. Uh, and then also Presti is also mm-hmm. probably their best uh, yeah. midfielder on form. But I had a look at the starting midfield against Gold Coast, bearing in mind they lost the clearance count against St Kilda 23-42. to 42. Admittedly, a strong clearance side with some good inside mids. But they also lost 30-36 to 36 against Gold Coast midfield. And the centre clearances were 12-4. to 4. I had a look at their starting midfield. So do we accept that Dusty's playing a bit of midfield? I guess. He's a hybrid yeah. forward. He definitely plays a lot of forward. He still won six clearances and a, a chunk of his footy was in the middle of the ground, but I'm not sure how many actual centre bounces he attended. But Cochin, Shy Bolton, Liam Baker, Jack Graham, Camden McIntosh, Marley and Pickett. They're just filling the gaps, aren't that's they? That's a that's a very average midfield. Like mm. Cochin averages nineteen disposals a game. Yeah. Like you need some heavy lifters in there. I understand he's an impact player maybe and he doesn't need to have thirty, but yeah. someone does in that midfield. Yeah, Bolton, Baker, McIntosh, they're gonna use the ball outside. They're not gonna be those balls that are going to get in there and to dig the ball from the bottom of the packs really are they exactly we, we love shy bolton on the, mm. on the drew footy yes. uh, collaboration uh, we're a big fan of what he can produce but again probably, probably ideally like a hybrid forward mid yeah. not someone who's going to be doing the heavy lifting i understand presti is out but liam baker good little player jack graham good player but they're role players yeah they shouldn't be doing the heavy lifting in the midfield marlon pickett's a very average football to be honest i've kind of thought <laughs> that for a while but he i mean the average is what i've got it here 16 disposals a game jack well, he was graham, playing 18. rough wasn't he uh, he probably plays second ruck, but he, yeah. he's listed on the wing. But, it, I mean, right. he is a midfielder. So, uh, he's list- when you look at the, their bench midfielders, were Riley, Riley Collier-Dawkins, seven mm-hmm. games. Uh, Jack Ross, 21. Yeah. Naish, eight. Like, that's a very young, exposed midfield. And I mm-hmm. think that is probably their weakness. And bearing in mind as well, Dusty's probably not All-Australian this year. He's mm-hmm. not having a good enough season to elevate them to, uh, to that extent. Good point. Thanks, buddy. But the point of this video is, Drizzy, to explore, are Richmond done? To what extent are they done? Uh, what are your thoughts? Dynasties do not come very often. As, when was Richmond's last flag before the dynasty began? Wasn't it 82 or something like that? Or 82. 1980, I think it was. 1980. So, yeah. yeah, obviously, they don't come along very often. And with teams like Melbourne and Brisbane and the Bulldogs rising, playing some real hot footy, obviously, the Bulldogs <laughs> lost to them. And But Brisbane dealt with Richmond. Melbourne dealt with Richmond as well. So... Um, this season is done. Can Richmond bounce back next year? I don't know. I think I think the dynasty could be done, Jesse. To be honest, I don't. 
uh, uh, it's so hard to write Richmond off because we are in the midst of like one of the best teams of all time. So obviously in like five years we'll be able to say, oh yeah, that was it. But this season has been terrible. I'll put it down now. Richmond won't win another flag under Damien Hardwick. Hmm. Where do you think they finished this year? Ninth? M- maybe eighth? Dockers have finished eighth. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, they've, got a, they've got a hard run home, I believe, because yeah, when you're top place on the ladder, you usually have, like, play most of the best teams twice. I don't exactly know what it is. It's going to be very hard for them to lift themselves back up after losing to Gold Coast, St. Kilda, and West Coast. Like, where, where is this inner drive going to come from? I don't think Richmond will win another flag in the next like three to four years. For my view, I think personally, I think they'll make the eight. I think they'll scrape in there, Maybe, probably yeah. win a final. But I don't think they have, uh, to be honest, the quality that can match it at the moment. Mm. Um, and then again, uh, we're over, uh, underrating probably yeah. you know, a great team. But yeah, I, I think they'll, I think they'll scrape into the eight. Mm-hmm. Looking past that, who finishes this year? Maybe Hooley. Um, Jack yeah. Rewalt, probably another year. Or two, maybe. Yeah, I mean, he's still got some longevity. To be Co- honest, I think... Cotton's at the end of his you, reign. Yeah, you think... And they're looking to top up, apparently, with another midfielder, which might mean that Cotton's probably going yeah. to hang the boots up. So, I don't know. To be honest, I think as long as you've got Dusty Martin in your team, yeah. you've still kind of got a little bit of a window mm-hmm. because he's that sort of sort of impact player. So, But like I said, like looking at that bench with that, that next glut of midfielders, your Collier Dawkins and that, they're, they're not there yet. Yet, yeah. Know? If they were at fifty games, then you'd think, oh, maybe there the, there's a transition there. But yeah. I, I think there's a massive gap on their list. To be completely honest, that that being said, it does kind of throw everything out if they can recruit someone. Mm-hmm. So they were linked to Tom Mitchell as soon as I put that video out. I think they came out and you know said Mitchell's not going anywhere. So it might yeah. not be Tom Mitchell, but it could be an Adam Chera or something like that. Um, so it, it, they're the sort of team that people will want to play for. Yeah, they're, you know, biggest club in the land, most successful club of the last you know five years by a long shot. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be very tempting for you know, an Adam Cheryl or yeah. similar talented player to, to go and sort of speed up their rebuild a bit. I said Damien Hardwick wouldn't, won't win another flag and I almost instantly regretted saying that. Oh, really? <laughs> 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 I like Damien Hardwick. I, I like Richard. I've enjoyed their reign a lot because they've always been a, a stinky side and mm. yeah, to come up from the ashes where they were 10 years ago to win three flags and they set out those goals when, I can't remember what his name is, Brennan Gale, that was the name we are looking for. Yeah, set out the goal to win three flags uh, by 2020 when Richmond were a terrible side at that time so to set out that goal and achieve the vision that's absolutely massive I've really enjoyed the Richmond journey and yeah I just wrote off Damien Hardwick and I feel bad about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think I think with their system you've always got to give them a chance that's the thing it's hard to write them off but if we're looking at list talent which is all we can really observe from the outside I don't think it's it's there yet. While the system's been great, they've also had some amazing elite players. Yeah. You, like, um, Rance is gone. We yeah. know that. They're still good without him. But, you know, if Rewalt drops off majorly or retires, I just downplayed Cochin, but he's obviously still an important part of the midfield. And mm-hmm. then, you know, Dusty's, what, 30 this year as well. Right. So, yeah, it, it, it's getting a little bit dicey for Richmond. Really interesting to see how they navigate this. Lepich left last year. He was a three time Premiership assistant. Um, and Damien Hardwick had a bit of adversity at the end of last season as well. Something to do with his wife. Um, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. The the coaching staff has been, I don't know, mangled? No, that's mm. not the right mm. word. Um, yeah, but the thing is they've coped with all that shit in 2020 yeah. as well. So it, it's hard to, to really see what happens. The thing is, right, if Richmond come back and win the flag this year, then it begs the question, what the fuck is a point of a 23-round <laughs> point, a 23 round season when a team can be playing this badly and yeah. be the best team in the competition? It just This would be their most impressive flag by far. Yeah, they can pull it off from here. We said that last year. Um yeah, but it could could easily be true. But I think I think a lot of it's mental, to be honest. Now that yeah. the dream is fading, it'd be interesting to see if they collapse in on themselves or they fight for eighth. Because fighting for eighth is a different mental battle when you've been the best team for yeah, a long time. So, sure. yeah. But anyway, guys, that is our thoughts on the Richmond collapse. Let us know in the comments what you think. I bet after we make this video, they go on a run of fucking yeah. seven in a row. <laughs> yes. it seems that's the true footy curse at the moment. But <laughs> it's a topic that had to be discussed. So let us know in the comments what you think. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Win a flag. <laughs> <laughs> All right.